love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tune into the ACCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Cavill inside the HBC Sports Lab and you see us in the rare form of Prairie View's 1876 homecoming Joe Clay. I don't know if he's getting different over there or what. But Charles, <laughs> I got one question. Yes, sir. I see it. I see it. It's basketball season. <laughs> Credit to Prairie View. Uh, we had a great time and we won the game. It was a big, big deal. deal. We talked about, about getting, getting the victory. Shout out to uh, the coach, athletic director, and most importantly, the players. Uh, my brother, Christian Law, was over there. Um, and so the twin boys, the sisters, and all the family, we had the RV set up. Charles, this year we had an extra RV. Oh, wow. Wow. We had an extra two spaces. So uh, that just meant more space for us to do what we do. <laughs> and do what we do is what y'all did. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you had a great call on the radio yeah. show. Uh, yeah, I mean, on right. covering the Texas Southern, Southern Grammar game, and they pulled it out. They did. So that was a big deal. went 2-0 on the weekend. That was a big deal. Yeah, that was a big deal. That was a big deal. That was a good game last night. Texas Southern pulled it out over Grambling. Uh And uh, just a, a well-played game uh, from a Texas Southern standpoint. But, yeah, I uh, thought we had a pretty good call last night. So, enjoyed that, man. We got a lot of football to get to, Doc. I mean, it was – whoo, we got to dig into some of this. I, I just want to hear who you got on the list. Who? <laughs> That's a great question. Who would I have on the ledge this morning? Who? I think Howard. Howard, come on, step up front. I think it's time. To... <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I think it's time to get out there and uh, kind of check things out. But uh, Howard definitely, uh, their fan base, welcome to the ledge. So. Oh, <laughs> Mike, what do you think in terms of what's going on? Uh, I appreciate you in terms of making sure I didn't wander too far in the wilderness <laughs> doing homecoming and you kept me on it straight. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I'm enjoying this beautiful sunset or sunrise this morning. Beautiful uh, homecoming weekend here on the hill. Or one of the HBCUs known as the hill is about 80 million of them. So, had a great week in football, enjoyed it with the family at the tailgate, and we did what we do, as uh, you so <laughs> aptly alluded to, and uh, CB, you look good on that radio, but son, I, I'm telling you, you look you look professional, hats off to you. I appreciate that, Mike, appreciate that, appreciate that. Good stuff, we'll bring uh, Drew in during the next break when we break down the top seven, those Dropping out, if any did, as well as those uh, three teams in the mix, creating essentially 10 teams that we'll focus on. We'll release week number nine today, uh, and we'll see how that goes in terms of what's taking place over the weekend. Let me go back you, didn't give me that, you didn't give me that ledge question. Oh, um, you true. All right, you right. My fault. Uh, <laughs> Mike? Thank you. Thank who's, thank on, you. who's on the ledge? <laughs> Alabama a &M. It's more, than a, it's more than a team over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a couple of them that already jumped off the plank. <laughs> I saw the game yesterday. They done got a couple of them jumped off the, I'm telling you, jumped off the plank. And there's a few of them just hanging off the side of the boat with one arm. So. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. That ain't right. That ain't right. Well, we over here, as you see, Mike is on one side of the uh, lab in terms of the ranch out here. 
is again uh, celebrating a homecoming where Prairie View won the game. Jackson State continues to make a statement, Charles. What are your th thoughts? I know you didn't get to watch all of that game as you doing your prep, but I'm sure you reviewed and heard the thoughts and things out there. What are yeah, your thoughts on that? I think a big win for Jackson State. I think they got uh, Bethune Cookman's best punch, uh, especially in the first half of play. Uh, so <laughs> it's funny. I kind of walked out of the booth and, and came back, and everybody was looking at me like, mm, I don't know. And I was like, well, that, this is what that was expected. That was expected with regards to Bethune Cookman, homecoming crowd. Uh, and uh, they, they came out and gave Jackson State their best punch there in the first half. But I think Jackson State. Uh, figured it out, and then you saw what happened in the second half. Defense made the adjustments, twenty to nothing, uh, uh, outscored them twenty to nothing in the second half. And you know, I think Jackson State will be favored in the next couple of games, and it's setting things up for November sixteenth. Pretty good. It must be Alabama State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's just something about that matchup, and I think yeah. every part of it. Let me take personal privilege and give a shout out to my line brothers that were there at home coming to came by the space. 24 Sons of Raw, uh, Brother Hoy Ellis, Herb Simmons, Brandon Steady Harris was in the building. Chris, Brother Chris Jordan was there uh, making some more. Brother Johnny Walker made sure that he presence was there. As, uh, he's always getting it done. Oh, y'all had to have fun with him online. Johnny Walker? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know who he is. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there was a shot game that had to take place every once in a while. <laughs> brother Mike McCoy, Waco brother as well. Brother uh, Tony Hanson uh, was in the building. Brother Mark Tippy, as we like to call him, he was in the building getting it done. Um, and so just shout out for them uh, in terms of the my LBs. Uh, we're in there coming from all over the country to fly in and get a little space. Uh, brother... Um, Jackson was in there, too. I need to make sure I give him the love. So he was in there. Eric Jackson was doing his thing. Uh, but uh, always something about homecomings, you know, uh, special. It's crazy when you think about it, or unique, I should say, probably better when you talk about HBCU homecomings. Because there's a cultural vibe where folks from HBCUs anywhere can very feel very comfortable in those spaces. But there's also uniqueness and a spe specificity. Uh, to a particular homecoming that kind of changes it. What are your thoughts on that, Mike? Yeah, it, it's a, it's probably the world's biggest combination of uh, family reunion and football gatherings, and you can see the camaraderie there across the board. And you know, you're giving shout outs to your uh, your line brothers, Twenty Four Sons of Raw. Shout out to two Black Twelve Strong. <clears throat> our 35th anniversary actually as of next week <laughs> so um we will un well, unfortunately end up in the uh the hallowed blind lands of las vegas there's no football event to attend and that worked out but we had a couple of uh, <laughs> of, of uh, brotherly sightings so uh so you know, hot shout, shout out to twenty. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not twenty four sounds raw, but uh, two black, twelve strong. The last line on the PV yard that was allowed to shave their heads, dress alike, the whole school days, and do it legally and get slapped in public, and nobody, <laughs> no fines for it. So, um, yeah, big shout out, thirty fifth in our anniversary. Probably said too much, but oh well, blame it, blame it on the homecoming. Hey, statute of limitations is passed. You good? <laughs> They, when they literally walked the yard, I was going to be like, Ooh, Mike, you tell it all of it. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back in the day, for real, for real. And literally, yeah. of all Greek organizations, uh, Pan and they were the last one to do that. Charles, I'd be I'm remiss if I didn't give you a chance to shout out some folks. Yeah, I'm going I'm to shout out to 13 to 5 Souls of Black and Old Gold. Is a, we're celebrating our 30th uh, next week for Jackson State's homecoming. So uh, we're going to get together mm -hmm. and enjoy. So. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you talk about homecoming, like you said, the camaraderie, uh, the, the familiar atmosphere, the, 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 the uh, and you, you use the term, the safeness, you know, within that space. Uh, it, it's phenomenal to be, you know, within that space. And, you know, it's, it's, it's good times. It's great times. And I can't say enough about, you know, just being around 
people that you grew up with, people that you spent time with on the yard, and just uh, enjoying everything with regards to, like you said, that, that football slash family reunion sort of atmosphere. With that being said, uh, one other group, you didn't say they own the ledge, and I certainly can understand that, but I'm sure there was some major disappointment for those Southern Jaguars that went to Tallahassee. I was uh, I was leaning, but I didn't, I didn't push them out there yet. No, nah, yeah, I, th- I can see, I can see that, but I think the word more is not necessarily ledge disappointment, but I'm sure they're voicing the fact that they, uh, after what happened to Alcorn, they did the Alcorn last weekend to kind of come back. Not the fact that you lose the family. I think anybody could understand family is a good team. Mm-hmm. We did have it as a watch out, but to, for family to dominate the way they did, I think surprised some folks. What are your thoughts yeah. on that, Charles? And then I'll come to you, Mike. Before we take yeah, I, think, I think that's fair because I, I thought with the win over Alcorn, I was like, okay, they're they're turning the corner now. They're starting to look like what I anticipated them look like, especially their running game. And uh, quite honestly, they weren't able to get their running game up and going uh, yesterday. And then uh, the the fact that you know, I, I think you see a lot of quarterbacks around um, the, the swag where just the quarterback play just hasn't been up to par. And I think uh, uh, Mickey Joseph voiced some of that frustration last week in his uh, Monday press conference. But, I, and I said, there's a sweet spot that you start start noticing with quarterbacks. Uh, anytime they start getting above a certain number of attempts, it, it <laughs> you know, it, it, the quarterback play just isn't where it should be. I mean, good quarterback play, you can take more chances in terms of passing attempts, but uh, when the quarterback play is just uneven, uh, you start to see those, you know, t- t- eleven for twenty-four, one hundred and twenty yards. You know that that sort of look see in terms of the quarterback play, and it's uh, it's it's probably been frustrating for quite a bit of uh, fan bases this past season in terms of just the uh, the consistency of the quarterback play. Um, Mike, let me get your thoughts on uh, just that Southern family matchup. Particular the score, not necessarily who won or lost, but the score differential yards passing under 100, uh, how many rushing yards family was able to get, and they hadn't been able to really run the ball all season. What What are your thoughts? Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. But um, I guess let me first say that, you know, you look at Southern coming in, I think, you know, they're scoring, what, 19 and a half points a game. Um, and you mentioned that FAMU and their ability to stop the run, and you think, you know, Texas, you know, Southern's going to have a decent, you know, or I'm sorry, not te- Texas Southern, but you think Southern's going to have a decent game. Um, but if you look at, you know, where they are in terms of offensive output, you look at, you know, their performance, the numbers don't don't lie. I didn't consider them off the ledge. I thought FAMU had a chance but simply because I felt that Southern has kind of been up and down. Uh, at points this year, you don't, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe Grambling, you you weren't sure which team you were going to get. Um, you know, fam, you had, what, 400 yards total offense. Southern only mustered, what, 200, I mean, I'm prepared. Southern, yeah, they only mustered, what, 200 yards, if I give or take, um, yep. of, of, of total offense. So, to me, that was, that was, to me, the most disappointing and also keep in fact that FAMU had pit, they were penalized like eight, seven, eight for like just under 100 yards. So they couldn't take advantage of that. I, I don't think Southern had many penalties at all, three or four. So I think the, the, the inability to take advantage of the penalties, the ability to really just move the ball off and, you know, passing, they had what, 83 yards. So I think statistically, that was disappointing, but overall, from my, I don't know if I'm ready to say that they were on the ledge. I think we came in saying that, you know, if you ask anybody, FAMU was probably the greater choice to win this game because of inconsistency. So that's kind of where I'm at with this game. I think you nailed it uh, in so many different ways. Let me give a couple of more shouts out. We'll take a first break. We'll come back in the next segment. I'll give the scores. It'll be interesting in what took place mid-major updates, and we'll give the scores of, of the top seven last weekend for major division. Give a little discussion on that. We'll come back in the third segment. We'll release the top seven. I'll tease that out just a little more. Uh, but in terms of what that looks like, shout out to Charles Tabby McCall was in the building yesterday with one of his Chicago friends. He 
showed out again. He showed out again. T lover. <laughs> there is no lover. Son of Zeus. Like that. You gonna pledge everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no more hate. <laughs> Shout out to uh brother Curly Buck. Got a chance to get out the house and enjoy some times. He really enjoyed it. Uh got to feed so many people, uh, players, friends. You know how we do it, make sure. We haven't still got enough food out there. So, and even mm -hmm. some folks that just looked up and popped up and had the courage to ask us, uh, I said, Yeah, you come on, get you something to eat. <laughs> I'm feeling one of those ways today. We had so much. Shout out to the wide receivers, uh, even the kicker uh, yeah. team, and all the specialists came over there enjoying a little something. I had to tell them to, to, to slide to the side as they were mocking the view of all the traffic coming in there. But uh, once they figured it out, they were good. <laughs> With that being said, before I get Mike into trouble, because it ain't me, y'all. With that being said, we're going to take a first break and come back on the other side. <laughs> if you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell leadership principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. <laughs> Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. You can press the analytic data with your hip hop if you know them like I know them. They gon' tell you if your team if they want a lot left and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We've been joined by A.D. Drew. Uh, so he'll get some insights on this mid-major uh, updates as we do that. I want to shout out Alan William. Big Al is in the building. I told you about Joe Clay. Uh, he found a way to get out the pool and put on some clothes. But with that being said, let's get in the receiving votes part of this. First, who dropped out this weekend? Tough one. Uh, Lou, Livingston Blue Bears have dropped out last week. Uh, they continue to make way, but receiving votes. No, we're not going to do the top ten yet. We're just talking about the uh, – uh, scores. We'll do that in the next segment uh, in terms of that top 10. But uh, receiving votes for Virginia State Trojans. Um, they won, defeated the Bluefield State Big Blue 45-6. to six. So they improved to 5-3, and 5-1 and one on the season. Florida Memorial Lions continues to win. They improved to 4-2-1, and 3-1 and one, as they defeated Ava Maria 37-4. Fort Valley State Wildcats are 5-3, and 5-1. and one. They defeated Morehouse Maroon Tigers 42 to 20 in that matchup. In terms of the top seven, Clark Atlanta Panthers did not play. They remain at 5 2 1 and 4 and 2 in conference play. Uh, Langston Lions had a matchup against Arkansas Baptist, but 
don't have a score there, so we're going to put in there did not play and leave them at four and two and three and one until we get some additional updates. At number five, you have the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. They've taken a serious slide, and they get beat up by uh, North Carolina Pembroke, 62-17. to 17. Uh, So they fall to five and three, four and two. Uh, as they keep continue to slide after two straight losses and starting out heck of a season. Bringing us to number four, Miles Golden Bears. They continue to roll. They defeat Benedict Tigers 26 to 14. They improved to six and two and six and oh. They're in a position to look about locking up a spot in the championship game, particularly if they can get a big <laughs> win next weekend. They'll be in really good positions to kind of do that. They got to play it all the way out because they still got that matchup with Tuskegee. We'll see what that looks like. And Tuskegee, even though they're not in the top seven, they're making their push. AD Drew kind of talked about that. They have won. Uh, so they continue to put themselves in a position uh, late in the season to see if they can get a spot in that championship game. But back to the CIAA. Big matchup here. Number three, Winston-Salem State Rams lost to the number one team, Johnson C. Smith Golden Rams. Uh, big statement here. 24 to 15 was the final. So Winston-Salem State falls a 6-3, 4-2, uh, really in a precarious position in terms of the CIAA championship game. Uh, they had one first-place vote. They'll probably lose that for sure. But we'll see what that means on Tuesday in terms of their ranking overall. Bringing us to number two, Virginia Union Panthers. We wanted to really bury this team early, but they've gotten back in that championship mix, and they are rolling. They do what you're supposed to do to a team that is around. Bowie State is not the Bowie State Bulldogs that we knew a couple of years ago, and they pounce them, a pound them, fifty-six to twenty-eight. So Virginia Union Panthers improved to six and two and five and zero. Oh, more importantly, the CIAA um, they did have the one first place vote in last week's poll. Bringing us to number one, just told you about this: the Golden Bulls. They are golden right now. As I said, they defeated number three with Salem State Rams on the road, big time matchup, and they get it done. 24 to 15. They are 8 and 0, 5 and 0. And they, they certainly are for real. There's no question about that now. Can they push it all the way up? Make sure they are in the CIAA, really close with 5 and 0 record to make sure that can happen. And more importantly, they're playing the kind of football you want to play, not all season, but down the stretch in terms of a championship and playoff run. Uh, they have seven first place votes. Uh, I'm going to go around and I'll go with you, Charles, first. What are your thoughts in terms of top seven? What took place this big weekend in your mind? Yeah, I think the big statement, uh, uh, John C. Smith, uh, I thought that was uh, a potential hurdle with Winston-Salem coming in. But once again, that defense just, it did what it normally does. Four and a half sacks yesterday. And then they didn't get didn't uh, allow Winston-Salem State to get their running game up and going. Uh, Trevon Hester only 16 yards yesterday on 12 attempts. And, and you can't say enough about just what they do defensively. They smother you out. So, a uh, huge win for John C. Smith. And, and then, God, Jada Byers, my gosh. <laughs> He's still running. 300-plus yards yesterday. I mean, I think he should be absolutely in line for Harlan. He's still running. I just saw him. Hold on. I see him down in the back. He's going over here to Texas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think he should absolutely be in the running for the Harlan Hill Trophy uh, for, with regards to just, the uh, I think, Virginia Union's all-time leading rusher. Uh, but what he does week in, week out, it's, it's amazing. Looks like we got an up, update on that Langston score that they won 42-0. to zero. As of last night, I didn't have the score, so we'll stand corrected. Uh, I did see them as Arkansas Baptist, but I saw no score for either site or the Sooner Athletic Conference. So it's hard to report when folks don't give you the information. But appreciate because our folks are on top of it in the lab, and they got it for us. So it looks like Langston improves uh, on the season after uh, losing early. That would improve them to 5-2 and two and 4-1 and one in conference play. So that certainly is important to make sure we get out there uh, hopefully that is correct. With that being said, let me go to you, Mike, and get your thoughts in the mid-may. You know, my thoughts are that uh, Johnson C. Smith is, is doing it all. I didn't think, to be honest, coming into this season that they could sustain this performance. But, I mean, I think you alluded to it. I think CB alluded to it. They're playing the type of ball that you want to play now. I mean, you look, they, you know, they're allowing – 
what uh, their teams to you know scoring. They're allowing only twelve points a game. They're allowing they allowing what seventy five yards rushing. They're allowing one hundred and forty yards passing, no higher than. And and they are and they're not even the highest scoring team on average. Now statistically, you can look at and say, well, the only one or two teams that have you know scored higher. In the, statistically, you could you could throw that to schedule, but they're playing the kind of ball, especially defensively, which travels well on the road. That a, that is come uh, that is reminiscent of a championship style team. I think they've turned some of the naysayers and. This last performance just really reiterates that. My goodness, what 12 points a game. That's what they're allowing. So, uh, shout out to them. So, nothing surprises me here. Good stuff, Mike, in terms of that top seven rankings. Uh, got excited there and hit that mute probably a little too early to let Mike do his thing. Let me go to A.D. Drew, get an update what he thought, particularly as the mid-major guru. Uh, what do you think of the top seven those uh, matchups and how people fared this past weekend. I check one, two. Can y'all hear me? We can. Yes, you're good. All right. That was, uh, uh, first of all, good morning to everybody. Uh, great to see you again, Mike. But I noticed everybody, including myself, has their tired, their tired voice working today. You know, not, not, not the energetic voice that we normally have after uh, homecoming on yesterday. Uh, first homecoming at, Why? I you got to throw salt at the house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had my first homecoming at the house, so I understand the feeling that uh, everybody has right now. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. But uh, as I heard far as the job top, well done. Yeah. As far as the top seven go, Doc, uh, I mean, it, it, it's great right now. The good thing is these matchups are going to play themselves out so that we can see who's going to line up the top in both the CIAA and the SIAAP. Uh, you mentioned Tuskegee. They've got a big battle with Clark Atlanta coming up this week. So Woo. that's going to, if Tuskegee wins that game, they it will go a long way in them controlling their destiny. They don't 100% control it, but if they lose that game, it is out of their control. And last thing on this, wouldn't it be great if right now we were talking about a potential Biles and Johnson C. Smith matchup in, in the Division Two version of the Celebration Bowl yep. instead of worrying about if the SIAC is going to even have a playoff team and how we are just to see do what a lot of our HBCUs have done. They lose in the first round of the Division II playoffs. I'd much rather be talking about uh, that type of a matchup and hyping that matchup up. It's not out there, so it is what it is, fellas. Great job to our uh, two teams, uh, Miles, Johnson, and Smith. Uh, watch out for those Virginia schools. One of them is going to knock, knock the other one off. Same thing with uh, Tuskegee. Uh, Omni State and Fort Valley, hey, and that one may be for all the ballers also for their second position. So we've got a lot of things to look forward to. Mm. Good commentary, good comments. Let's go to the major division where there was some fun had by all as well. We talked a little bit about some of them, but let's start with those teams that dropped out this past weekend. I'll give a shout-out to Howard Bison. They lost to Norfolk State Sports. And we're able to make a major statement. Some people said, don't bury the Spartans yet. And they start off conference play, a second game in conference play for them, actually. They get it done at Howard Bison, which was their opening game. Uh, they win 21-20 to 20 in that matchup. Uh, the Braves of Baltimore State and receiving votes will start with Alabama State Hornets. Uh, they improve uh, their season as they defeat Alabama A&M, the Bulldogs, 27-19 uh, in terms of that matchup. Uh, and then we have Grambling State Tigers. Again, we're not we're not doing the, the poll rankings. We'll do that in the next segment. We're just giving updates from last week's poll. Grambling State Tigers, um, they had a loss to Texas Southern Tigers, 24-17. to 17. I was interested in that matchup. I thought the Tigers could get them in terms of Grambling, but it was a nip-and-tuck game and really was thrilling in a lot of ways with Texas Southern driving late in that matchup. And I go to Charles to get his thoughts on that after we finish the top seven. Alcorn State Braves did not play 
uh, this weekend. The top seven at number seven, the big matchup we looked at was Florida a and Rattlers at home against Southern. Could they bounce back after a tough loss and uh, against Jackson State the week before? Well, they took care of business against the number five Southern Jaguars as they won that matchup uh, in terms of defeating them and only allowing the Jaguars to score six points, which was fascinating for me to see in terms of that matchup. So I was curious uh, when those scores came out as you started getting them. You know, you had to wait a little while, Charles, because your Wi-Fi, when you get all those <laughs> stuff, still out there until folks finally kind of leave. But FAMU you right. 24 to 6. Uh, so FAMU improves to uh, 4 and 3, 2 and 1. Big win for them. Hampton Pirates won two straight after getting uh, even out their record in CAA play to 2 and 2. They are 5 and 3 overall. They defeat Elo and Phoenix 41 to 21. Uh, number five, the Southern Jaguars, as we said, they lost to Family Rallies. They are four and four, three and one. Number four, South Carolina State Bulldogs defeat Delaware State. And man, did they put up some points. 69 to 35. They improved to five and two, one and oh. Just when everybody was looking at the Bulldogs, people might look a little closer now. They match up with uh, North Carolina State. I mean, North Carolina Central seems to get ooh, a little more interesting week by week. Thursday night. Okay. Thursday night. Ooh. Man, barn burner right there. Tennessee State Tigers did not play, so they remain at 6-2, and 3-1. and one. They have the first one first place vote. And number two, Jackson State Tigers did not allow uh, going to Bethune Cookman after a big win uh, to get them in any positions. They win 37-17. They are 6-2, and 4-0. Three first place votes in North Carolina Central was in a defensive game, and they found a way to pull it out homecoming. As Morgan State Bears can shut you down defensively, uh, but they just can't seem to put up enough points to make it uh, enough for them to get the victory. So Central does what they need to do, and they win sixteen to seven. They improve to six and two, two and zero overall. Seven first place votes. The Eagles continue to soar, uh, even when they get clipped a little bit. Uh, they get it done. Again, setting up for a big matchup Thursday night, as they say in these parts. Uh, with that being said, let me go to you first, A.D. Drew, and get your thoughts in terms of the major division top seven scores this past weekend. And I want to throw this out. After we get through the top five in our votes, and then maybe six or seven, how tough has it been for us to get those last three that we submit in to – to this poll. Uh, I know we only showed the top seven, but we're required to vote ten. Man, I struggled this weekend trying to pick numbers eight, nine, and number ten uh, in the poll. Great, great victory by Florida and on on yesterday. Central continues, continues to do what Central does. Howard uh, disappointed me. Uh, we, we'll, just, we'll just leave that right there. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm missing somebody that's not fine. Who am I missing in the top five? Mike. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Drew. I'll finish up. But, uh, yeah, and so looking forward to some, uh, once again, looking forward to some great matchups uh, coming up, especially, uh, and I know we're getting into it later, this upcoming Thursday. This one could, that one could be for all the marbles in to react the way those two teams are playing right now. Yeah, we'll discuss that in the last segment. It is officially the game of the week. Uh, with that being said, let me go to Mike and get his thoughts in terms of the top seven uh, major division games that played this past weekend. Um, really no one. The one that stands out to me was, good Lord, South Carolina State. I thought that was a basketball score when I first saw it. 69 points. I mean, where they call them in the fourth quarter, where they call them people out the band to come down and play. I'm just, seriously. So uh, that that offensive output right there, um, nothing really in the concourse here surprised me. I was disappointed, as we talked about earlier, and uh, maybe some of the performances. I thought Alabama A&M would fare better. Alabama State, you know, they were, they're down the fourth, fifth quarterback. They're trying out people. Uh, what? But overall, no, no, no real concerns. I do also say that at this point in the season, you look at the MEAC, you look at the SWAC, look at the top of SWAC, you got 
three and one, a couple of undefeated. So you got almost, you know, a couple of teams at the top of the MEAC. It's like AD Drew pointed, you got what, six or seven teams, and then the shelf kind of falls. Can any of that second shelf folk, folks step up and serve as spoiler? Um, and I was looking at that as well. You know, you got the wheat starting to separate itself from the chafe, but is there any of the chafe that can come back at the end of the season and play spoiler? Good stuff, Mike, uh, when you break that down. And much like AD Drew, I agree with you in terms of the challenge of when you're looking at sending in your top ten, that bottom three, four, uh, you can struggle with at times in terms of what that looks like. But let me see what Charles has to say uh, in terms of what he thought took place in the major division this weekend. Well, the first thing that hit me, Dr. Bill, when I saw that South Carolina State game, was like, boy, they couldn't keep the cues off the field on this one. Uh, 69 points. I wow. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I said, oh, gonna, hey, it was home for the whole me at home for the century. My uh, <laughs> everybody yeah. won their homecoming, Norfolk State, South Carolina State, and North Carolina Central, to your point. Yeah, shout out to London Blow. I figured he'd have a happy week uh, with the win over Howard. So, uh, the big no, here for he can't State. have enough value wants to go not chase his coach. He's going to chase another. He's going to have right. to he got to chase off other coaches. <laughs> but uh, I think a big win for Alabama State over Alabama any of Magic City Classic. And we talk about Kareem Key being the, the fourth quarterback, but efficient game yesterday, 14 of 20, 131 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Uh, and if they just get efficient play uh, from the quarterback, you know, they have the running game. They, they become – a scarier because they have such a great defense. So uh, keep an eye out for, for Alabama State. Like I said, it's setting up November 16th with Jackson State. Uh, but we have Super Game Part 2 coming up this week, this Thursday. Uh, in terms of taking a look at South Carolina State and North Carolina Central, you can make an argument. The winner of that has the leg up on the Celebration Bowl. So. Woo! Heck of a matchup this early. I like it, though. It's going to be interesting when you say what's going on with that. Let's take our next break. Uh, we'll come back on the other side. Roy's done an excellent job of teasing out the major division poll rankings as we're getting into it. We're finally going to release it in this next segment, and then we'll have these <laughs> gentlemen talk about the major division poll rankings. Uh, with that, we'll be right back after this next break. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? <laughs> oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Hey, grab me one, too. And Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. 
Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash, as well as the upcoming week of HBCU sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Gaville's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. We have an Ed Drayden sighting in the building as well. Clay like Allen is up in the backyard. Boy, I tell you, folks are finally up and moving around. We halfway through the show. Mike, I don't know what these folks do for a living, man. How they, how, what, what they yeah, do? they look like they're struggling. Boy, they're <laughs> serious. <laughs> oh, let's get in the top seven. Uh, with the top seven, we're going to talk about a team dropping out. Southern Jaguars, as they jump in last week after a tough loss, they fall right out. They're 4-4, four, 3-1. Four, uh, but they're still in a good position in the Western Division. But it'll be good to see how this plays out. With that being said, receiving votes, Southern Jaguars do uh, stand at the top in terms of those receiving votes. So they're just outside of the top seven. 4-4. Uh, four, four, Three and one, 141 points. And then you got the all court state Braves that did not play. They stayed just outside of this. And they're four and four, three and one, 138 points. And then you have Grambling State Tigers. So this is all swags receiving votes outside of this top seven. Grambling State is four and four, one and three after a tough loss uh, to Texas Southern. And look at them starting off conference play. They're one and three. Uh, and they've had some tough losses uh, to several West Division teams, so I'm not sure what their remaining part of the season in terms of the Western Division race looks like, but it should be interesting as we follow down the stretch. Looking at the top seven, we have Alabama State Hornets. They sit at 4-3, 3-1, three, three and one. talked a little bit about their big win in the Magic City Classic. Uh, that puts them in the poll ranking, top seven, back in the mix. And, Mike, you talked about fourth spring quarterback. they actually worse than that. They are at the fifth quarterback. You're right. It's not a string quarterback. It's the fifth quarterback because it's actually a wide receiver that has moved to quarterback. Plays from quarterback in high school, different discussion. But they find a way to get it done. Just amazing victory when you talk about what their defense does and they can do anything on offense and they're still winning ball games. Good job for the Hornets. And number six, Florida a and Rattlers bounce back with a big victory over Southern. They're 4-3 now, 2-1 and one in the conference place in China. Stay right behind Jackson State and make maybe that matchup that uh, Charles talked about against Alabama State, Jackson State, a little more interesting. They're two back, but so they might be hoping more for a three-way tie to see things fall hard. out. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Versus just doing it on their own. With that being said, uh, they are. Uh, at number six, at number five, Hampton Pirates did not play, so they maintained five and three, two and two. They s slide up a spot though this week uh, because of Southern's loss, as they are uh, in the mix. At number four, South Carolina State Bulldogs five and two, one and zero. Oh, talked about their victory in conference play, one hundred eighty-seven points, but they stay at number four, and you'll hear that refrain as we move up the top of the rankings. For example, at number three, you have Tennessee State Tigers, a 6-2, and 3-1. One. one first place vote, 190 points. Uh, they stay at number three, even though they did not play. It looked like maybe it was going to get close there, but uh, they maintain that third position. At number two, Jackson State Tigers, 6-2, 4-0. Oh. They're rolling now. Three first place votes, 221 points. Uh, that distance lost to Grambling State, where they turned the ball over so much and uh, is – uh, nothing to think about now. You like, and the big thing, it was a non conference game, conference game. So even with the loss, it did. And number one, North Carolina Central Eagles, they improved to 6 2, 2 0. Look like they're on a collision course. South Carolina State, again, we'll talk about that in the last segment. But now you see the top seven. North Carolina Central continues as the number one team in the poll rankings as they continue to get it done. That'll do it for the top seven in week number nine for the major division as we unveil it today in front of everybody. 
I'm going to start with Charles this time in terms of the top seven. Charles, what do you think in week number nine? Well, you know, if I'm a South Carolina State fan or a Tennessee State fan, I'm going to politic a little bit for that number two spot because that Gremlin loss is starting to stick out uh, for Jackson State in terms of, uh, of of receiving some first place votes because uh, as Gremlin State loses – uh, a special game like last night to Texas Southern, uh, two inexplicable personal fouls down the end. They really extended the drive for Texas Southern. They were able to knee it out. Uh, and the fact that Miles Crawley went down last night, that was a, that's a tough loss of grandma. And that, that loss has really started to stand out for, for Jackson State. So if I'm a Bulldog right now, I'm like, wait a second. Jackson State lost to grandma. What, shouldn't we be up a little bit higher? So, and, and the same with regards to Tennessee State. I think you make very good points there in terms of that. I always tell people to re- remember that this is week to week, and sometimes your timing of a loss can pay a lot in regards as you get to the overall end, the overall picture of your ranking does it. But uh, that's a good point in terms of what that may look like. Let me go to AD Drew as Mike is uh, giving people a little par- panoramic shot. You got Joe Clay in the building. He's up now. <laughs> <laughs> Troublemaker. Trouble. It's gonna be some trouble. <laughs> Where's Roland? He ain't got a Roland out to put Roland out. He ain't ready. He had a long day. Homecoming <laughs> 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 twenty four. That's more to Joe Clay. You see him do AT seventy six uh sports and podcast. He's been all our show with that. Let me go to AD Drew first before I go back to Mike. Uh, and get A.D. Drew's thoughts on the top seven matchups. Well, Charles makes a valid argument at the top of the poll. I want to focus on the bottom three of this set of this seven. Hampton, Florida A&M, and Alabama State. All three of them have similar records. But Hampton is above them, but Hampton is upside down in their conference. Hampton has has beaten three HBCUs. They're undefeated against HBCUs. And but one of them those HBCUs was a division two. Same thing with Alabama State. My point being, while I have no argument about the top four of the bottom three, Florida A and M should be the tops of those bottom three, just based on those two factors alone. I think that's a pretty good argument uh, in terms of that mix. Um, it'll be interesting as we kind of flow this out. But I think this week I can see where you would uh, push Fam you up there uh, above Hampton uh, in terms of that victory, particularly with Fam you having a win over at that time, a top 17. So good point there, Drew. I'll, I'll give you that one. Let me go to you, Mike, and get your thoughts in terms of what's taking place in the top seven. Number one, it's kind of what we it's this picture right here is a picture of what we've talked about all year. Where is the SWAC West team in this mix right now? We're talking entering the last quarter. Where is a SWAC West team here? You know, where do we expect one to even show up? Um, the other thing is I think you could make I agree with CB's argument on South Carolina State. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure about Tennessee State buying for that that uh, an upper spot. Look at how they've been playing. Look at their defense, where they are in the MEAC. I agree with that statement. But it just baffles me that it's going to be the SWAC East against the MEAC somehow for the championship. That's what it's shaping up to be overall in the context of greater things. I don't know if I'm a believer of Hampton. Um, I don't know, you know, AD, you know, said a lot of things. You look at statistically where they are in that conference, you can do the numbers all day. They don't look believable for me to be at number five. I think you could justify easily if if Alabama State had a quarterback, but if if was a whatever. But you can justify easily moving FAMU up uh, over over Hampton. Um, So... Why did uh, Mike come out of home coming hazing the uh, Swack Western Division? So this, that, that's a good question that's posed in the chat. If South Carolina State knocks off North Carolina Central, how big a jump do they make? Bingo. Bingo. 
I would think they'd have a major statement to maybe jump to number one. I mm. certainly think they go to two. I mean, that's where I would put them in the boat. Who does Jackson State have this weekend? I don't have the schedule in front of me. Who does Jackson State have? Uh, they got UAPB for homecoming. So let me ask you, Charles, that question. Enough, How far uh, would he jump? Yeah. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's hard for me. Your, your thoughts on it. It's hard for me to, Go ahead, to, Charles. to, to, to jump them from four to one, especially if uh, Jackson State and or Tennessee State, they, they get a win next week. Uh, that, that It's going to be tough, but I can – a win over North Carolina Central, I can I can throw them up right here behind whoever is the winner uh, of, of of Jackson State. Yeah, up, I, I can throw I can throw them in behind the number two. Yeah. Okay, Drew, your thoughts on that? Particularly now that you know Jackson State has homecoming against UAPB, uh, they got a victory, solid victory for them. Went over Valley. They've got two conference victories. Uh, in terms of that, but one of the things that Mike talks about is the fact that uh, Southern was in the poll last week representing the West. The problem is they had to play an East Division team this week. But anyway, Drew, uh, how far would you have South Carolina State moving up with the victory over North Carolina State if Jackson State uh, wins themselves, currently being at number two? Uh, where do you play that out? Right now, because Tennessee State's big game is not for a couple of weeks when they play Southeast Missouri, that victory would be the best victory, best quality win of those teams that we're talking about in contention. So even if everybody else wins and even blows out their opponent, just based on the quality of competition, I would probably be moving South Carolina State to number one and then you know, evaluating the other ones on, on other victories on how far I drop Central down because Central may only drop down to number two if they if they play a game and it's a uh, it's a close victory by South Carolina State. I like that you threw that in there. You're right. We got to talk about how the game is played. Who was? Is it a big win for South Carolina State or is it just a narrow victory? And with all that being said, some of those – Eagles out there and say, what are you talking about? We're going to win the game regardless. With that being said, let's take our next break Come for our final segment. We'll come back and talk about a couple of these matchups, particularly at North Carolina Central and South Carolina State. We'll take a little deeper dive as people kind of touched on it, but it's a big one. And we'll see where some other matchups that has people's interest. So stick with us after this last segment. We'll come right back as we'll do that last segment and call it a show. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. Hey, grab me one, too. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCF 10 Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. At Auto Masters LLC, our mission is to serve our community by providing quality automobiles at affordable prices. All of our vehicles are inspected and certified to offer you the confidence in knowing you have a quality vehicle. Our goal is to provide you with a seamless process and positive experience for your automobile purchase. Financing recommendations and specific vehicle inquiries are available at your request. You can find us at www.automasters06.com and like, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, please feel free to contact Terrence Miles at 601-927-7794. And oh yeah, tell him Sonya sent you. 
print the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Dr. Khalil, inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Let's get into it and talk right to it. We got that matchup. We have a one versus four matchup. North Carolina Central Eagles, 6-2-2-0 versus South Carolina State Bulldogs at number four, 5-2-1-0. When you talk about this matchup, it is in Orangeburg, which is always a tough place for North Carolina Central to play. I'm fascinated about this matchup, and I'm going to go to you. Uh, Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of this football matchup? <laughs> I'm people this is it's a, a, a celebration bowl ticket on the line. Yeah, I think it is a celebration bowl ticket on the line. I think this is a tough one to call uh, because of when you take a look at it, and I've talked about quarterback play being consistent. Probably two of the more consistent quarterbacks week to week, Eric Phoenix from South Carolina State, Walker Harris from North Carolina Central. Uh, so the question for me is what defense – which defense can get to the quarterback? Uh, who can who can turn this team over and create an extra possession for the offense? Because both offenses very explosive. North Carolina Central putting up thirty six points a game. South Carolina State thirty one points a game. Which defense can create some extra possessions? I think that's the question uh, for me going into this game. As of today, I like North Carolina Central in this game. Mike, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? I think um, it's in Orange. Uh, it's in South Carolina, basically. Um, I think also it's a battle of two very strong defenses. I think CB alluded to one is allowing 20 points a game. The other one's 23. Um, one, <clears throat> one's defense is kind of edging out the other in terms of if you look at the scope of the last three games, I think it's going to come down to really whose defense is going to impose their will more so on the other. Uh, that's become the mantra of South Carolina State. So you expect their defense to step up at home. Um, South North Carolina Central is going to have to bring their A game on the road in South Carolina. That's asking a lot. I'm not saying they are. They they can't do it because they've done it before. But this 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 mountain right here. This is you said it yourself. Celebration Bowl on the line. So I, I think this is the game right here, but I, I think it boils down number one, to whose defense and whose offense cannot, as they say across the pond, muck it up. So good analysis there. Let me go to AD Drew. Get your thoughts on this uh, matchup that has a lot on the line uh, in so many different ways. Which way are you going with your thoughts? You know, earlier this year we said Jackson State Fairview was the game of the year. But I think we need to reclassify that game. That was the game of the year West. This is the game of the year East, uh, North Carolina Central versus South Carolina State. Uh, I have not had a chance to dive deep into these two teams, but I have seen them both play uh, uh, Central in person and on TV and South Carolina State on TV. And it's a going to be an interesting matchup because both of their strengths are in the same areas. Usually mm -hmm. when you get an intriguing matchup is when one team's strength is another team's weakness. So this is a battle of strength on strength. Yeah. Good running game on great running game. So uh, a great defense on great defense. But I do want to uh, say this last thing going out. When, this, when these schedules were put together back in the summer, and ESPN picked up these games. They have done a tremendous job picking up the games this season because every game this season that has been on ESPN, ESPN2, or ESPNU on, on, on cable, satellite, whatever, has been a great game. The, the matchup that you're supposed to have and the teams have done their job to live up to the, to the hype. The only hiccup in, in those TV games was uh, the Orange Blossom Classic with the rain delay, and you, there's nothing you can do about that. But great job for whoever puts those schedules together at ESPN as far as which games to pick up. Because obviously they got somebody who knows a little bit something about HBCU evaluating these games, and I need to have that person on my team 
so that I can go play some of these uh, lottery tickets while I'm out here on this road. <laughs> Great commentary, and I agree with you in terms of those matchups. The other thing that I thought has been fascinating the last couple of weeks talking about television is it seems the planning that SWAC has done in terms of featuring uh, the matchups that happen at different times such that people can kind of focus uh, on those matchups, particularly the late one, where it, uh, as of late, has been the only match of the night, which has been a big deal. Great information there. Let me stick in the MEAC and give you another matchup that's intriguing to me. This is Norfolk State and Morgan State. Both these teams have losses to North Carolina Central. So if Central wins this game, it probably doesn't matter what takes place in this game. Uh, but if South Carolina State, this becomes an intriguing matchup with just both of them have one conference loss, particularly North Carolina Central. That means they would have the conference ahead of them still having that South Carolina State matchup. What are your, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup uh, for various different ways? Sticking with you, Drew in terms of this Norfolk State and Morgan State. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I why this game may look good on paper <laughs> and you're doing a great job trying to sell it, give me give me a data point. So I love it. Bruh, I, I'm I'm not buying it, man. I am not buying it. Morgan State, you know, <laughs> until Morgan State finds an offense, I can't, I can't even consider buying them. Until Norfolk State decides they want to be consistent. Now, have they been playing possum in the non, in the non conference season, waiting on conference play? I get to be determined, but I mean, this is the for me, this is the unimpressed. Because neither team has impressed me this year with their play. So that's what we're going to do of this, the unimpressed bowl. AD Drew, you broke that down so well, and I'm not even going to insult, insult Mike. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, to follow yeah. up, because I think you summed it up well. So we're going to yeah. move on to this UT well, bar. Exactly <laughs> what, what he said. <laughs> exactly. I was like, wow. Uh, UT Martin comes in in terms of this matchup as uh, they vis visit Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, UT Martin's five and three, three and one in the conference play, while Tennessee State six and six and two, three and one in conference play. This one I think may be a little more interesting, at least in terms of the matchup uh, where these two teams are uh, as they are chasing Semo uh, in terms of that matchup. Uh, you, Charles, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of Tennessee State UT Martin? This is the prove it to me game for, for Tennessee State. Uh, whether I know they for real, like you said, I know they're chasing SEMO, but this is one, especially around this time of the year, that we've seen Tennessee State drop. But I think Tennessee State's a little different this year. Draylon Ellis, I mentioned the consistency of the quarterback play. Uh, you could put Draylon Ellis, he's sort of in that in that room, if you will, with Walker Harris uh, and, and uh, as well as um, uh, uh, Eric Phoenix in terms of the consistency of quarterback play. So I think Tennessee State can get the win. Can I get a little Daniel Richardson in there on that action? Daniel, Daniel Richardson as well. He's in that room. Okay. He's in that room. No, I, I think – Yeah, no, just simply I, I completely agree with uh, CB. I think this may be the year that – um, Tennessee State can pull out the victory. You go back three or four years, and we, we have this talk, and you still see, you know, Tennessee State kind of falling in the second or third tier in terms of, you know, statistics. But this year, they have similar wins, similar uh, deficit um, against uh, like opponents. They're, they're statistically, they're, they're up in the top tier this year. So I think this is the year that they have a good shot at actually beating um, uh, Tennessee. So uh, UT Martin, I'm sorry. but So I, I kind of go on that. Um, I, I think they played a solid year. You look at their victories. You look at, again, you know, the point deficit. There are a lot of similar some similarities with these teams, and the team is playing well on both sides of the ball. So I agree completely with what CB said. Eddie Drew, your thoughts on this Tennessee State UT Martin matchup? 
uh, I, I, I did over both my two colleagues. Uh, Tennessee State has had a tendency of dropping, dropping the game this time of the year. Sometimes against uh, good opponents, sometimes against opponents they should be. Not only will a victory here with uh, against UT Martin keep Tennessee State's hopes alive and the uh, dream matchup against Southeast Missouri State, but a victory here may allow Tennessee State to actually lose to Southeastern Missouri State and still make the FCS playoffs. So that that's the other thing. Tennessee State wants to put themselves in a position so that should they drop that game at the end of the season, they will still be get looked at for at large first. Good stuff there. Let's go to the SWAC. Uh, we'll do the SWAC this way. This is a full SWAC slate, so I'll let you all pick if there's anyone that sticks out to you. You have Southern and Alabama A&M, Arkansas Pine Bluff and Jackson State, Ramblin' at Bethune-Cookman, Prairie View at Mississippi Valley, Texas Southern at FAMU, Alabama State at Alcorn. Uh, so you have basically your SWAC East crossover the first time that we have all six uh, games uh, featuring the SWAC team. So Either of you all, let me go with you, A.D. Drew. Which one of these games uh, stands out to you, if any? Uh, give me that rundown again because I don't have it in front of me. Yes, sir. Southern at Alabama A&M, UAPB at Jackson State, Ramblin' at Bethune-Cookman, Prairie View at Mississippi Valley State, Texas Southern at FAMU, Alabama State at Alcorn. Who? Uh <laughs> None of these games are the sexiest games in the right. world. You know, the, the, these are not quite the 2 o'clock at the club games, but <laughs> one, it is getting, and, you, and you better start, start thinking about somebody. Of these games, the Alcorn uh, Alabama State game is the one that has the most on the line because – Whoever loses that particular game is probably out of the race in their particular uh, division. So if you, you want to talk about a game that you need to watch uh, as a fan as far as how the rest of the season is going to play out, it's going to be ASU versus ASU in in the base, in Mobile. Got it. Quickly, guys, as this battery is finna catch us on this side. Yeah. Uh, let me go with you, Mike, uh, first, then Charles, and then we'll shut it down. Which one yes. of these stands out? Real, real quick, because my battery is about to go anyway. It, it, it's, it's, it's got that hang on, that uh, homecoming hangover as well. But um, <laughs> if I had to choose the two, um, as I, uh, AD was throwing, I was thinking the same thing. If you know, it's not the best matchups, but if I had to choose one, it'd be the Alabama State versus the Alcorn. Um, for the same, same reason, a little bit reverse. If there's any team that wants to make any kind of final statement as to being either, you know, top of the East, top of the West, this is one. Other than that, the other ones are just, they really are not sexy matchups. Charles? Uh, I think uh, Jackson State UAPB uh, uh, is right in line behind Alabama State and Alcorn. But when you take a look at that, uh, you'd love – for Jackson State to have an impressive win against a UAPB team that can score, so I, th I think though that's the one that kind of I kind of keep in mind because um, Makai Higgins, he's a pretty good quarterback, dangerous quarterback for UAPB, and they had one of the best receivers in the conference. So uh, Jackson State's defense, they have to uh, shore up this weekend to, to take on this UAPB offense. Good stuff. We'll call it a close there. Texas Southern fam, you Tallahassee is the homecoming there. I might. Find a way to get on that plane with Texas Southern still. I you thought that, that was a game I was going to choose, didn't you, Doc? <laughs> yeah, I thought you did, but I like what you did. Your purpose. You're truly a professional. With that being said, thank you for listening to Inside the HP Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kiana Cavill, the dean of HBC Sports. Come from inside the lab in the College of HB Sports with Mike Washer, Charles Bishop. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Mills Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watch Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6, Sunday at 9 o'clock. Even if it's after homecoming, we find a way uh, to get you your HBCU news of the week. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest in the news. Follow me, 
Doc Yana Camilla on Twitter. I call it Twitter because I can't. Facebook, Instagram, inside the HBC Sports Lab on, on Twitter. Facebook and YouTube is inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Oh. Charles? Of course. Mike? Mike? Lecture. KD? Dismissed. Ooh, we made it.